Before we get into the battle, people, you need to make sure you've got enough energy to watch this. And what do I mean by that? Get yourself some G Fuel using code SALT for 30% off. My favorite flavors are dragon fruit and peach iced tea. There's a bunch of other flavors you want to try. You can get starter kits, you can get tubs, a whole bunch of different ranges there for your energy and caffeine needs or non-caffeine needs. Link in the description of the video, people. Come and check out G Fuel with code SALT. If you miss the salt, it's not my fault. What's up, YouTube? Tonight, we're going to be doing the Random Egg Series. I haven't done this for quite a few months now. I think I may have done it last year. Now, the rules of this video are on the screen. So we got 30 minutes after hatching to make a team. No dupe Pokemon. No getting rid of a Pokemon, of course, unless it's a dupe. No rebreeding. No knowledge of what egg I'm going to get. And then I have to battle with the team and try and get a win. So in this video, I'm going to show you my whole team building process from scratch. And then I'm also going to be including two battles I had with this stream. This was pretty cool. So I'm going to be sending off my uh, six random eggs here to people in stream. What I did is I put a code up and I said, you know, first thing, get to trade and then I'll get traded an egg. Now I'll also be including all my step-by-step -step showing the EVs, the items, everything, the uh, moves I got and all that sort of stuff. So let's get and see what I got. So we got Absol as the very first Pokemon. Second Pokemon I got was Phoebus. The third Pokemon I got was Rylos. So it's a pretty cool type so far. The fourth Pokemon I got was Zora, which is nice. I like Zorai. The fifth Pokemon was uh, Wingo, a nice Pokemon there too. And the final Pokemon on my team was Archon, so a good amount of Pokemon. So first uh, things first, we're going to have a look at what we got here. So these are all my Pokemon I've got. Let's check out the summaries and that sort of thing. So these are the display of the moves that I had for every single Pokemon. I was starting to think of uh, what sort of movesets I could actually use. And I was looking at Archon, I'm thinking, might be able to use that Archon as like a powerful physical attacker. Had a look at Wingo, I was, wasn't sure. I had a look at Rylou. I had a little bit of an idea I might make that into a physical set with some of the moves that it's got there. And Absol, well, I didn't really know what I was going to do with that. And I had a little bit of an idea what I might do with Phoebus. Had to decide whether I was going to evolve that too. So first things first, let's have a look at the natures I got. So some of the natures I actually kept the same. And some I did change if I did have a mint or something like that. Uh, but pretty much I tried to, you know, try to keep the same natures. So first things first, let's have a look at Archim. Now, I noticed the Archer already had a couple of good moves there. It had Head Smash, so I decided to teach it Earthquake, because we're going to be running a powerful physical attacker. So we had Switcheroo and Head Smash. I actually really liked those moves on there. I thought they were cool. I was thinking, might be able to put a choice item on. So I gave it Earthquake, which is a pretty nice move. I can, uh, you know, obviously hit Steel types with that. That'll be good. Switcheroo, I thought, would be good for, like, uh, stalling Pokemon. And then I went to the uh, Move Tutor and gave it Dual Wing Beats. So that was pretty much its move set right there. I got rid of Quick Attack for that one. I was thinking about leaving Quick Attack and was like, nah, we'll put uh, a Flying-type move on then. Now, the uh, the item I gave it, oh, sorry, the uh, EVs first. I gave it uh, a Max and Attack with the Protein. And then I gave it the uh, choice band as the item. So I gave it max attack and max speed. So that was the EV spread uh, on there. And all I had to do then was just give it a couple of candies and evolve Archon all the way up into Archops. Now, this is going to be one of the, probably the better Pokemon on my team. Like a very you know, very fast Pokemon and a hard hit with choice band. So that's the way it went. And I thought this was going to be pretty good. So next Pokemon we're going to have a look at is going to be Ryola. Now, first thing, do I want to evolve the Ryola? Like, what should I do? Should I leave it as Ryola? I went into my TMs list and I thought, okay, I'm going to give this Ice Punch. Now, I did initially give it Blaze Kit, but I changed my mind just to like the coverage of moves that I had. So I thought Ice Punch would be a little bit better. Now, I was going to keep High Jump Kick and I was also going to keep up Bullet Punch. So I thought, well, even with the max speed, this had Adam and Nature, by the way, or like a um, definitely a, um, an attacking nature. And I gave it the uh, Sally Bear. I thought it'd be quite good with Endure. Then I gave that to it, and I gave it max attack and max speed. So exactly the same as the Archeop. So next Pokemon now is going to be the Zoroa. And I'm going to be evolving Zoroa into Zoroark straight away. Uh, just level 57. And I learned Night Days there as I was leveling up. So like, okay, I'm going to give it Night Days. Now I want to actually make this a special attacking set. But I want to work it around some scummy moves. So Night Days has a chance of actually dropping the accuracy. And then I was thinking, maybe I can play some games with Substitute. You know, that'd be pretty cool. So I, I decided to give it Substitute and get rid of uh, the Sucker Punch there. And then I gave it Bright Powder. So I thought, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, the other move I gave was Sludge Bomb as well. So that worked out pretty nicely. And then I gave it Max Attack and Max uh, Special Attack. So uh, next Pokemon is going to be the uh, Abzol. And I decided to make it into a Weakness Policy Abzol here. And I gave it the Tibbon Min because I wanted to give it, uh, you know, Max Speed. 
So I gave it a couple of moves there, which worked pretty nicely. And then I moved on to the Phoebus, because uh, the Abzol was pretty straightforward. I just gave it a couple of, uh, you know, like Dark Pulse and uh, you know, a couple of, like one Psychic move as well. So with Phoebus, I pretty much was just going to make it into a Miracote user. And I gave it Protect and Miracote and Surf. That was pretty much all I did. But with the Wingo, I just evolved it into Pelipper. And I decided to make it into like a bulky, uh, very, very bulky set all around with Stockpile. That was the idea. Yeah. Now, my final movesets will be in the battle, so you get to see them, but pretty much we were good to go. I gave it leftovers, I gave it uh, HP up and zinc, and uh, you know, bolted out in special defense. So, this is the final team here. You get to see I even got them nicknames from the chat as well. So, we got some pretty funny nicknames here, and then I started searching for the battle. So, let's get into it without further ado. This is a battle. This is a random battles on the YCOM. This is against uh, Kate. So. Um, I had a pretty interesting look at the uh, team previous. I was like, what the fuck am I going to get destroyed this one or not? And the first Pokemon here is going to be the Alola Night Tales. Now, Alola Night Tales commonly sets up the Veil at the start. So I'm thinking to myself with Archops, maybe I could go for Head Smash here. But if I get out sped or something bad happens, maybe I should just go into Pelipper because that'll obviously stop the uh, Aurora Veil. Now, I will say one thing here too. I did not have max IVs on this Pokemon. Um, and in fact, like most of the Pokemon did not have very good IVs outside of the Archon, I believe. So the Night Tiles ended up going for an Ice Beam there. And, you know, Pelipper's going to take that one pretty nicely. So I've got the leftovers there too. So as I said, I've got Max Health and Max Special Defense. We've got Roost, Skull, Akaring, and Stockpile. So, you know, Akaring and Leftovers is pretty nice. And then Stockpile to make it, you know, very bulky. And then with Scald, I could get some damage and maybe get a burn. So I thought that'd be pretty fun. Too. So go for Scald on the Nine Tiles there. Very good damage there. That rain was definitely helping out a lot there because you know, I didn't have any special attack EVs whatsoever. So uh, now Nine Tiles, it's, it's kind of on the ropes here because it's either going to have to go for another Ice Beam or it's going to have to swap. So Nine Tiles is going to be swapping out here. And we've got the Gardevoir coming in. It's like, okay, Gardevoir. Now I know that Gardevoir does get Thunderbolt. And I know there's a chance of doing that. Or maybe it's going to go for Calm Mind and start boosting against me. Because, you know, Skull well, probably won't be that powerful after a couple of Calm Minds. So I got some leftovers recovery there. I was definitely thinking here, well, it wouldn't be the end of the world if I swapped here. I might be able to use my Pelipper, you know, maybe a little bit later on. So now we're going to go into Abzol. And uh, obviously this was, this was nicknamed uh, Doom Desire because, you know, Abzol is like bad luck and brings about, uh, you know, unfortunate situations. And uh, Gardevoir was going to go for a Psy Shock. So that was a really, really good swap in there. I took no damage. So we got Future Sight and in, Dua, in Dank Pulse and Air Slash and Weakness Pulse as the item. So I thought... Well, this would be a great time to go for Endure, get the Weakness Policy to activate, and then hit it hard and fast with a Dank Pulse. So here it comes. It's going to be using Draining Kiss, and Draining Kiss is going to put me all the way down on one health. So that was pretty good there. Very, very nicely. So now my uh, uh, Weakness Policy is going to activate. Do I go for uh, the Dynamax here? I was like, well, I don't really want a Dynamax or one health, especially with that Nine Tiles, because that you could swap in there. And, you know, the hail is going to faint me. So I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go for Dark Pulse. And hopefully, if I can get a flinch here, that should be a two-hit KO. Surely. So go for the Dank Pulse there. And it does very good damage. Unfortunately, we don't get a flinch. And now it's going to take me in the Moonblast. So it had a Draining Kiss and Moonblast. So wanted to make sure it did uh, very, very hard with those very tight moves, I guess. Now, the next Pokemon I'm going to bring is going to be my Archops. And, of course, we call it Smash or Pass because it's got Head Smash. So we got Head Smash, uh, Dual Wing Beat, Earthquake, and Suturu. At this stage, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for Dual Wing Beat. I'll lock myself into that move. Dual Wing Beat misses. Oh, you wouldn't read about it. And now Gardevoir's going to go for a Draining Kiss. Now, the bad thing here was he did a lot of damage to me, but it didn't put me in defeatist range. At least that was good. But, uh, you know, Gardevoir got a lot of its health back here. So I was contemplating and go for a Dynamax here, so I wouldn't miss, but I thought... I don't know if I want to waste my Dynamax so early on. I haven't even taken a single Pokemon out yet. So go for the Dual Wing Beak, and this time it's going to connect, and that is going to be the end of the Gardevoir. So finally, I took the Gardevoir. I was very, very you know, happy about that. Now, next Pokemon to come out on the field is going to be the Night Tiles. Of course, you know, I did expect this one to come in. Now, I've got the Dual Wing Beak uh, locked into that, and that should take out the Night Tiles. Um, of course, if I don't get out sped, that was another thing. But I was like, you know what I'm going to do here? Instead of me uh, just taking this out, I'm going to go for Dynamax and change the weather so that'll put the sand up there. Also, I just noticed the uh, Archops was in a, uh, a love ball too. Now, once again, people, if you do enjoy this series and you like to see it again, let me know by hitting a like on the video and a comment below. Like, 
let me know if you want to see this series again. Like, I'm happy to do it. It's just I'm not sure how many people will you know, really, really like seeing it all the time. I think it's a fun little you know, extra sort of series I do on my channel. So back to the battle here. I'm going to drop Stone Journey's cousin on Nine Tiles real quick there. And that is enough to take it out, which is great. So I outsped Nine Tiles, which is always good. Once again, the uh, the IVs on these Pokemon will not max either. So some cases, I wasn't really sure whether I was going to outspeed or take stuff out. So, you know, they're not all 31, you know. Next Pokemon is going to be called Medheria. Oh, Hera. Oh, I get it. Medhera. Okay. So I've got Max Roffle and a thumping 150 base power. That should do some good damage. And now we've got the G-Max Hatterene here. So G-Max Hatterene is most certainly... Oh, well, it's most certainly not going to go down a one shot. I mean, I'd probably have to get a critical hit here, but once again, it depends what my opponent is running on the uh, you know, the EV side as well. Now, I'm, I'm possibly certain that I'm going to faint this turn, unless I, I might live under like a low amount of health just due to the sand like boosting me, but I don't think it's going to be pretty either way. Uh, so go for another max rot for you, obviously outspeeding, and very good damage now. I'm absolutely happy with the damage I did to the, uh, you know, the Hatterene then. So now it's going to go for its little G-Max uh, Spite here. It doesn't do a lot of damage to me, but it is going to uh, actually confuse me. So that's the... Uh, that's what that move does, right? So now Archeops is confused. It's going to take a little bit more damage here by the sand. So it's like, okay, well, I've got one turn left here. I mean, I, I, I haven't got much to lose. I think with Max Rockfall and the sand, I should almost be able to take this out. And now it's going to go for Max Guard. Wait, it's, it's something came out of its hat then. Something that the back of its hair came out the top of its hat. That looks really, really interesting. Anyway, so I protect that or Max Guard, and that's the end of my, um, that's the end of my uh, Dynamax. Now, I can go for dual wing beat here. That'll be all right. I mean, I step out of confusion and got it off. So, like, that's pretty awesome. So, I got the first one. The second one landed, and it actually did a little bit more damage, but it wasn't quite enough to take out the Hatterene. And now, Hatterene is going to finish me off the G-Max fight. But I was thinking to myself, wait, there's still Sandstorm to happen. I, I think I think the Hatterene is just going to live on, like, one health here. Here it goes, people. Watch it go. Bam. And it just lived on one health. The merch is available. Hopefully soon I'll have some new merch as well this year. Hopefully. So next Pokemon I'm going to bring in is going to be my Rayolo. So there's no point in me going for Endure uh, to get my Salic Berries. I'm like, well, I can go for uh, Bullet Punch. So I've got Ice Punch, Endure, Bullet Punch, and High Jump King. Now, if you remember, the Rylo did come with uh, the Bullet Punch and High Jump King. So I'm going to go for the Bullet Punch, and that is going to take out the Hatterenes. That's good getting rid of that. Very, very good job, though, by the Archops. They did an excellent uh, job there. So the sand is now gone. And the next Pokemon to come in here is going to be the Sylveon. So Sylveon is a little bit of a problem here. I mean, I've got Bullet Punch, which would be super effective. I could go for Endure, but I'm only going to get a Sally Bree. So I don't really see much point in doing that. So I just went for as much damage as possible in case this had, like, calm mind. Now, the uh, Sylveon's going to go for a Draining Kiss. There's a lot of Pokemon that have used Draining Kiss so far. And you know what? Rylo gets wiped, right? Now, the reason we call it Naruto run, because it actually runs like Naruto, you know? And I think Lakaru does too, like, like a ninja, you know? Um, so when you're running to Area 69. So next Pokemon to come in is going to be Phoebus, and it was called Only Fins. I thought that was a very good nickname. So I've got Protect, Surf, Mirror Coat, and Rain Dance, because you need to use protection, right? The things you learn in a Pip Night video. So now the Sylveon's going to go for a Psy Shock here on my Phoebus. Now, since this came with Mirror Coat, I was very inclined to use Focus Sash and Mirror Coat, and it worked perfectly. Mirror Coat's going to kick in here, and that's going to be enough to take out this Silver. I bet they didn't expect that one. That was awesome. So now, Phoebus uh, can go for, I guess, a Surf against the last Pokemon, and they're probably fine. Next Pokemon is going to be Primarina, and this thing is actually going to be quite a problem here. I can't do a lot to it. I just went for Surf. It was, it was the best thing I could possibly do. I outspeed it, which is good too. So, I mean, Primarina isn't very fast. Anyway, but that's another story. So, Primarina is going to go for Draining Kiss as well. I think all these Pokemon actually have Draining Kiss. I think they all do. I think they may have all used it so far. I could be wrong about that. I don't know if Ninetales has used it yet. I'm not sure. Maybe it did. But anyway, uh, that's the end of my Phoebus, but a solid performance. Next Pokemon is going to be Zyrite called Catfish, and we catfished it as the uh, Pelipper. So, I've got Sludge Bomb, Night Days, and Sub. Now, I do have Bright Power, so I thought, well, I've got absolutely nothing to lose here. I'm going to get one shot by this thing. So how about I throw up a sub shoot? I might be able to play some Bright Powder shenanigans. So now it's going to go for Draining Kisses again. I'm like, well, there's a very, very low chance that I'm going to avoid one of these moves. So maybe, maybe if I go for Sludge Bob and, you know, just take it out, right? It's, I don't think I've got max special attack anyway, um, like IVs wise. So I was like, well, you know, I might, have, I might just have to go for it because all I've got left is... um 
is my Pelipper, and it's only got like one attacking move, which is Scold, and it's going to be difficult to take out another two Pokemon of Zoroark. So anyway, flush 69 times, which is Zoroark. Does an excellent sludge bomb there. Critical it would have taken out. Here comes a Moonblast on the Pelipper. Obviously, they know that I've got uh, Zor it hidden as Zoroark now. And yeah, that, that's the end of my Zoroark. But that was all good. Uh, pretty solid performance there by Zoroark. Excellent damage to uh, Primarina. So all I've got left now is flush 69 times. Because people are like, Pelipper looks like a toilet. You know, like it's beak. It looks like a toilet. And that's going to bring the Drizzle on. Now, the Drizzle actually helped out the, uh, the Phoebus too. Because the Phoebus had switched him. That was another strategy I was running with it. So I've got Roost, Scold, Ackering, and Stockpile. At this stage, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going for it. I went for the Scold in hopes that it would take it out, and it lived on like one health. I was like, man, I can't catch a break. I got the burn though, but but the Primarina went for the uh, Draining Kiss, and it's going to do a little bit of damage to you. So it's just going to recover enough so it won't faint to the burn. But that's okay. I can definitely take it out the next time. But I did have a little bit of a thing. I was like... There's one Pokemon left. Now, it is a bulky Pokemon. I don't know what sort of moves it's going to be running. Maybe I should go for a stockpile to prepare for that. You know, that would be a smart play. So, Uxie's going to come in. Uxie, as you know, is a pretty you know, bulky Pokemon. And uh, Pelipper's going to go for a stockpile. So, I'll be able to take moves a lot better. So, that's going to you know, increase my defense and special defense. And I've also got that leftover. So if I can slide up at Ackering, that'll be really, really good. And I've got Roost to, you know, recover myself. So Uxie's going to have Draining Kiss as well. Maybe they're all, maybe this is some sort of special team. I'm not sure. But it was really cool, though. All their Pokemon had Draining Kiss. So Skull does really good damage. I was actually very, very happy about that. So Skull seems to be about a three-hit KO. You know, as long as the rain is, uh, is is flowing nicely. Next move is going to be a Psychic. So Psychic doesn't do much either. This Max Elf, Max Special Events Pelipper of plus one is very, very tanky now. So one more Gold should do the trick to take out the Uxie. And then Primarina only has like a little bit of health left there, right? So now Uxie's going to go for a Shadow Ball. I think they're going to try and drop my Special Defense. And that's no, by no means going to take me out there. And even a crit wouldn't have taken me out. So Pelipper's going to go for another Skull. And that is the end of the Uxie. I feel like Uxie and all the, like, all the fairies, like Uxie, Mesprit, and Azov, they should be fairy types, right? Added with a Psychic. What do you think? Like, leave a comment below. I definitely think they could have easily been had a fairy type added to them. Like, no, I mean, they're literally fairies, right? Next Pokemon is the Primarina. We already know that it's on a lucky like, low amount of health. Can I take it out? without the rain and yes i can and that's the very very first battle done with the random egg team that was a very close battle and it was, it was sort of it was kind of like a theme team that one so kate if you ever see this video thank you for the battle a really cool team there hope you enjoyed the phoebus i sure did and let's get on to battle number two so this is against leo Vid Vid valdez i think that's it valdez Okay, so this is a pretty scary team. Wait, is this like is this like a, a James Bond team? Maybe, maybe it's not. I think everyone calls their uh, the Intellions like James Bond or James Pond or 007 Sniper. So it's going to be a physical set, and I went for the Miracote. It's a disaster, people. So I went for Miracote here, and it's going to fail. I, I was pretty salty because you know why. After that, he went for Snipe Shot. So I thought they would definitely be going for a Snipe Shot being called Sniper 007. So, man, that... That, that was sus. So that's going to be the end of my Phoebus. Next Pokemon I got is my Archops. So like, okay, well, I've got Dual Wing Beat. That should do some great damage and take it out. So there's one solid damage, and there's two, and that is the end of our Sniper 07. So good. Next Pokemon to come out here is going to be Rillaboom. So like, well, okay, if it's got Grassy Surge, you can get Grassy Glide, but I can still go for Dynamax, and it didn't. So I went for another Dual Wing Beat there, and that's going to be the end of our Rillaboomer. So that's two Pokemon down. Very good. A, a solid start to the battle. But it, it got even more solid. Now, the next Pokemon here is going to be Zachary's Ace Shot. And it's going to get a boost in the attack, of course, with, uh, you know, Temperate Sword. At this stage, I'm thinking, well, I think this can actually take my entire team out. Do I risk the Max Quake and just try and take it out here? I, I don't know. So I decided to go for the uh, Dynamax here. I, I, this could have been a very, very bad play to go for that. But when you think about what Pokemon I got on my team, I really didn't have any other options. Not like I had a... Um, I wish Phoebus got Counter. That would have been good because I could have used Counter and Miracrote as I said there. Not, you know, not that it would have worked in Onteleon, but you could. I would have probably kept it back just for a Pokemon like Zaysa. But I outsped it, and I'm going to go for Max Quake here. I was like, this should take it out or do heavy damage to it, and Zaysion is going to be no more. So we've got an Archop Sweep going at the moment. Now, on Archop Sweep, on that topic, I've done an Archop Sweep 
deliberately putting it into Defeatus and then sweeping with it. So make sure you check that one out too if you like uh, our chops. I wonder if anyone will comment on that video. I'll, I'll check my comments in the morning when I uh, eat my breakfast. But that could have been back in Gen 7. So next Pokemon's going to be Obstagoon. I got very, very close to taking that. It was a, it was a, it was really, really solid performance right there. And uh, now the sand is going to be happening. Obstagoon's going to go for a Night Slash. Night Slash is going to do very, very little damage, you know. And now I can finish Obstagoon off with uh, pretty much any attack here. So I went for Airstream just so I could get a speed boost. I mean, I was going to outspeed the rest of the team anyway, but I thought I'd get something out of it, you know. It's not like I'd max knuckle or anything. So getting a crit there on the Upskin, which we all know that mattered, and that is the end of, what's that, that four Pokemon down there. So they've only got two left, but this is where things started to go really pear-shaped. So that's going to be the end of our drops. As you know, I've got the Choice Fan, so now I'm locked into Dual Wing Bay. So... I'm going to actually be able to swap out here into another Pokemon. So, like, you know what? Let's go into, uh, you know, Pelipar. This will be good. I'll get the rain happening, and then I can hit it with a Skull. That'll work out very nicely. Now, I'm not sure whether this is going to be their Dynamax Pokemon or, or G-Max Pokemon. And it was like, okay, we're going to have, uh, you know, G-Max Colossal. It's not often you get to see people use G-Max Colossal, you know, pretty much because... Oh no, they like to use the more sweaty Pokemon uh, put thing rather than Colossal. But you know, I think it's a really cool mod. But it didn't turn out to be G-Max Colossal. It was just normal Colossal. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Uh, so I swapped in Pelipper. And I was wondering what I was going to use. Like, it's probably going to use like a rock move here. But I wonder what move it's going to be. And it's going to go for the max rock falls. Like, okay, that's not too bad. Uh, Pelipper takes that kind of good, I guess. And it's a two-hit KO. So I was like, well... I can go for a water type move here. Will it take it out? I don't think so, but it'll do like pretty heavy damage. The only thing I was, was worried about here, if it did have steam engine, like I might activate steam engine, but I thought, well, I, f I feel like I'll do a decent amount of damage to Scald anyway. And I might be able to take it out. So I went for the Scald there. It did sort of underwhelm me damage, of course, due to the sand. And yes, it's going to have steam engine. It's like, uh oh. So with Steam Engine, if you don't know, it gives the user, uh, well, the person who has it activated, in this case Colossal, a plus six in speed, so it's very, very fast. And that's going to be the end of old uh, plus 69 times. So I'm like, well, no one on my team now can probably outspeed this, but we'll give it a go anyway. So I went to Catfish, which is the Zorai. This time, I'm not disguising myself as anyone. I'm just going straight up for sub tutors. Like, let's go for sub. I get outsped. Here comes the Max Flare here. I was like, wow, I'm going to be toast, and I lived. I was like, wow. That's, that, that was, that was a lot, I took that a lot better than what I thought. The good thing is here, I lived the attack, and not only did I live the attack, I can go for the sub here, and it, it, I'm hiding behind the sub, which is great, and then I can go for attack and move. So Colossal is now out of its uh, Dynamax. So I'm thinking to myself here, well, I can go for Night Days, that'll be good. It's going to go for Incinerate, and Incinerate is going to break my sub, obviously. Now, I was thinking here too, well, the sun is up, so it's, you know, it's fire attacks are going to be hitting pretty hard here. I could go for night days and hopefully take it out. Nope, I didn't take it out. No way. And Colossal is going to take me out with another incinerator. So, bye-bye, Zoroark. I was hoping to get an accuracy drop there and with bright powder, you know, try and get something to happen. But, you know, that's, it is what it is. So, going to my uh, roller now, I know that I've got two turns left of the sun. So, I want to see if I can stall that sun out and see if it's used any other move. But, of course, it's going to go for incinerate. And incinerate is going to incinerate right my selling bro it's gonna be it's gonna get rid of it so i was like okay well, we'll go for bullet punch and that's my only option and did like three damage and that's gonna be the end of my rilo too so i'm getting reverse swept at the moment by this colossal simply because it's out speeding all of my team so the uh sunlight is gonna fade which is good there and now i'm gonna go into abzal so I'm like okay abzal well, I have to take this out right now. Can I leave an attacking move with this thing? I don't know. Now it's going to go for Heat Crash. I'm like, uh oh, this is bad. Now, if I didn't use Endure with my Raiolu earlier on, I would have fainted that because of the sun, you know, and uh, Heat Crash. So that's going to be the end of Colossal. So that was a good play there with Raiolu stalling the last turn of the sun. Now, last Pokemon I got is going to be Mudsail. And for some reason, it's just called one. I'm not sure. Maybe they, they, they're trying to say that they, they they won. So I went for Enjoy, hoping for a body press. And they went for a heavy slam instead. I was like, man, I would have gone for a, a weakness policy, dank policy. So I'm going to endure that hit and just go for dank policy on the Mudsail. And I was hoping it wasn't stamina. So it wasn't stamina. And it's going to go for high horsepower. So that's the end of the Absol. Now, the last Pokemon I've got left here is going to be my Archop from earlier on in the game. So I swapped it back in here. I only took a little bit of damage. I was like, let's go for dual wing beat. There's one. And here's the second one. And that is enough to take it out. But what a crazy battle. A, a roller coaster, you could say. And I hope you enjoy this one, people. I'll catch you next time, maybe for another random egg battle. Peace out, people.